News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. The candidates are debating, but is anybody listening? Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It is Monday, October the 20th, 2014. Thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Montana Morning. Right now, we have 39 degrees in Missoula at our newscast this morning, sponsored by Temp Right Service. For all of your plumbing and heating needs, call Team Blue, 728-1111. Republican Ryan Zinke and Democrat John Lewis are emphasizing their differences as they attempt to win over undecided voters in Montana's U.S. House election. The wild card libertarian candidate Mike Fellows, who says the party candidates are compromised by big money, And only he would work for more liberty and less government. Well, they met yesterday in Kalispell in only the second debate that featured all three candidates. Lewis attempted to paint Zinke as waffling on issues from gun restrictions to his partial support of the budget by Republican Representative Paul Ryan. Zinke says voters have a clear choice. He pointed at Lewis and said they can vote for big government. He pointed at himself and said they can vote for little government. Or he said they can vote for no government, pointing to fellows. U.S. Senate candidates Amanda Curtis and Steve Daines are meeting in their first back-to-back debates. Republican Daines and Democrat Curtis are scheduled to debate at 6 o'clock this evening at Montana State University Billings Petro Theater. It will be broadcast by Montana Television Network stations and Yellowstone Public Radio. It will be the first time the candidates have met since Curtis was selected as the Democrats' replacement nominee in August when Senator John Walsh dropped out of the race because of plagiarism charges. Uh, Monday's debate. Tonight's debate will be followed by one tomorrow night in Sydney. And staying with that subject, control of the state Senate could come down to a half dozen key races in the coming election. Republicans hold majorities in both the state Senate and House. Their 29-21 edge in the Senate is much narrower than their 61-39 advantage in the House. The newspapers of Montana reports control of the Senate may hinge on races in Billings, Helena, Bozeman, Great Falls, and up on the High Line. Leaders from both parties say they're confident their sides will make gains in November's elections. Missoula is one of four locations across the country officially prepared to handle a case of Ebola. However, hundreds have made frantic calls to hospitals, clinics, and emergency services worried about the issue. Director of Missoula County Emergency Services Chris Lounsbury says his office takes the role of coordinator in these cases. Our main role, of course, is that coordination piece. And so what we're doing is we're working with our partner agencies here at the hospital, talking with our fire departments, law enforcement, our ambulance companies, and just working to make sure that they have any information or any supplies that they need should there come a time when we end up with a patient here who comes into Missoula who has Ebola. Lounsbury says the process of providing information to the public is bound by privacy laws such as HIPAA, especially in relation to health care agencies, which leaves the job of notifying the public to the Missoula City County Health Department. They are the department that would be the lead agency in the county working on that. They're the ones who monitor things like infectious disease, and they've already begun to put out information just so that if a patient does come to the Missoula area, the City County Health Department's webpage right now has up a list of frequently asked questions for folks about the Ebola disease and, and Missoula's planning and those kinds of things right now as well. Lounsbury says the best cure for the fear the public has about Ebola or any public health crisis is information. However, many only get their information from social media, which can be dangerously inaccurate. Just days after the decision against the T.J. McDermott for sheriff campaign, Montana's Political Practices Commissioner Jonathan Motel issued yet another big decision stemming from a Missoula primary race. Modal says last week his decision came against Justice of the Peace candidate Marie Anderson. It is a more serious violation than that involved in the McDermott campaign. What the decision found is is that the candidate presented uh, a low-budget $2,000 expenditure primary campaign that consisted of um, yard signs door-to-door knocking, when in fact what the candidate engaged in was a large-scale direct mail campaign self-funded. Like the McDermott decision, the Anderson decision also involves the law offices of Datsopoulos, McDonald, and Lind. Well, they were mentioned, but the, but the decision took care to specify that, that the interaction with, with the law firm was minor. And I don't want the law firm's involvement to take attention away from the significant violation that, that is actually by far the more dominant campaign practice violation. Commissioner Modell says the Marie Anderson campaign failed to report or disclose about $8,000 in direct mail campaign costs that occurred in a time period that should have been disclosed in a report before the primary. 
A new poll of 410 Montanans conducted by faculty and students at MSU Billings last week may encourage some state Republicans in the weeks before the midterm elections. Despite being a purple state, Montana has had relatively few polls conducted this year, making the MSU Billings poll a touchstone of what to expect on November 4th. Here's MSU Billings psychology professor Matt McMullen. We found a lot of good news for Republicans. The U.S. Senate seat that Steve Daines is seeking was 47 percent for Daines and 31 percent for the Democrat Amanda Curtis. We had 40 percent for the Republican Ryan Zinke and 33 percent for the Democrat John Lewis. The poll asks many other questions ranging from the economy to the Keystone XL pipeline and of the Affordable Care Act. Another question uh, that we didn't ask last year about whether uh, you had been personally helped or hurt by uh, the Affordable Care Act. And we found that uh, 60% of uh, respondents said that they had not been hurt by it. We found 25% of people said they had been hurt by it and 7% said that they had been helped by it personally. There were significantly more undecided votes in the U.S. House race where 35% of respondents still had made up their minds on who they were going to vote for. The U.S. Supreme Court has rejected a Montana judicial candidate's request to block a rule that says he can't seek or use a Republican endorsement in his nonpartisan race. Mark French filed his request for an emergency injunction with Justice Anthony Kennedy last week. Kennedy referred the application to the full court, which denied it without comment on Friday. Authorities say a Montana State University student has been arrested after a woman said he tried to enter her shower stall on campus. The Bozeman Daily Chronicle reports Alexander Nikolai Moreno was booked into the Gallatin County Jail Saturday on charges of misdemeanor assault, minor in possession, and criminal trespass. Police say Moreno is also a resident of that dormitory. Well, the NOAA Climate Prediction Center and the National Weather Service have released their official long-term winter forecast for western Montana. Meteorologist Corby Dickerson says the upcoming winter will be relatively dry and warm as compared to previous winters due to the influence of an El Nino weather pattern. They're placing a 67% chance of El Nino developing by the end of this year. And what we typically see in an El Nino winter is warmer than normal temperatures with a drier than normal signature. Even though there may be isolated pockets with a few snowstorms and cold snaps, Dickerson says the upcoming winter will probably be mostly dry and mild. News Talk time now, 610. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. It should end up being another nice day after a chilly start in the Missoula area. Temperatures will jump quickly up in towards the 70s, high of 71 degrees today with plenty of sunshine and some rain showers expected for your Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Matt Gray for KCI 13, your first alert station.